welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Today is about raising awareness for um, African diabetes in the African community. My role is the health outreach worker. So what I do is events like this in the community, help bring people together to talk about health. My mother was diabetic. Okay, so it's important to keep an eye on yeah. how things are going. We're going to have the diabetes specialist nurse doing some health checks and stuff here. And you can have your blood taken, you can talk about your heart with the British Heart Foundation. We've got Oscar, YMCA talking about fitness. Everything for health. We've got Juliet coming up next, so she's the diabetes specialist nurse. Welcome, Juliet. My name is Juliet Thayan. I'm a diabetes specialist nurse in Nottingham City Care Partnership. Diabetes prevalence has really gone up, and that is the purpose for this group today. And the reason for us gathering here is to give the awareness of the problem. It's about what diabetes entails, what it does to us, how to take care of ourselves, how to prevent complication. Nobody wants to end their life having renal dialysis. Nobody wants to be disabled. Nobody wants to have amputation. Nobody wants to go blind. Nobody wants their family member either to have such complications. It's a condition we have to live with, but it's about knowing how to manage it better to prevent the complications. And that is why this event is here. Self-help groups, getting involved to learning from each other, very important. I'm not saying it is easy to manage. It is a difficult condition, but it's not a disease per se. The difference is a condition you can live with, you can manage it, and your life goes on the way you want it to be. Thank you. Today is just like Juliet says, it's about diabetes, not just I haven't got it or I don't know anybody has got it, it's our community. So let's continue to raise that awareness and support each other. So thank you very much. From today's event, we wanted to achieve the uh, community awareness uh, to get the African joining with other uh, communities and raising diabetes uh, issues together. In the African community, people are very busy trying to catch up, you know, trying to work and provide for their family, trying to sort out their immigration status, trying to uh, bring uh, family so that they can live together, you know, after a long separation. So they have a lot of other things in their mind. So health doesn't take uh, number one. If your diabetes is not uh, diagnosed, it may be diagnosed a bit too late and it may end up to so much complications. I know of people who have gone blind because of the diabetes. So the current issues are how do we help people avoid those unnecessary complications, unnecessary death? We use excessive amount of oil and some oil is saturated oil, like the palm oil, you know. It's lovely, but we have to, to have a small amount of it in our food. We've moved from um, Africa to England, where our movements are restricted. We use more of uh, uh, cars and buses, whereas back in Africa, people walk they walk lots, you know. South Up Nottingham have been established for about 30 years. Um, my role has been going in the last year, and it's a two year pilot funded by the Clinical Commissioning Group. So, my role as a health outreach worker is to support individuals. So you may think, oh, well, I have diabetes or I have a long-term health condition and I need some support in getting to the gym or a health programme or speaking with a dietitian. It can be a big maze to a lot of people. So I offer that individual bespoke package to people. Come and see me. We'll have a chat about what it is you want to do and then we'll do it together. 35% of Nottingham City are from the black, Asian, minority and ethnic community and out of that percentage, more than half will have a long-term condition, probably diabetes. 
Well, that's a big question why diabetes is prevalent in the black Asian minority and ethnic community. Now, there are a few reasons. Um, it can be hereditary. Uh, it can be our diet. It can be our exercise. It can be the environment where we live. So here today at the African Diabetes Awareness Event, we've got lots of different services. We have the City Care team who's made up of nurses, dietitians, and what they're doing today is taking people's BMI checks. Um, the reason why that's important is because we need to know how much we weigh, our height, and all of that sort of stuff to see if we're likely to get diabetes. Because it's not just about you know, helping people who have it, it's about preventing diabetes, which is a really big thing as well. We've also got the Juggle program, who are part of City Care. Now that's an education program for diabetes, a four week program that people can just go along to. I can go along and support those people who want to go along to that if you feel a bit nervous as well, um, and get that education. And then obviously we have the people from the self-help groups here who are living with the condition, are experts about it, and can tell you how they've been supported with self-help groups. If people suffer with diabetes, it's very likely that they suffer with high blood pressure, they suffer with breathing problems. All of these things tend to go hand in hand. So, you know, by focusing on the diabetes, we're also addressing some of the other long-term health conditions as well. Diabetes is a condition whereby the body does not manage to get rid of the glucose levels after somebody has had a meal. And this is specifically with the certain types of foods, like the carbohydrate or starchy foods. So the person develops large, large amount of sugar content in the body and in the blood. The specific types of foods that we actually recommend to be changed are foods that are starch-based, carbohydrate foods. And these, there are many of carbohydrate foods that we have, things like potatoes, things like rice, and also our natural fruits, because they have natural sugar in them. My role as a community nurse is to go out there to see our patients with diabetes. Because I'm a specialist nurse, we go out there in GP practices to see all the patients who have type 2 diabetes and also type 1 diabetes. We do go to GP practices. We also go to the homes for patients who can't actually access our services in the GP practice. The symptoms that they could look out for if they are they might suspect they have diabetes are things like waking up in the night, going to the toilet, which is unusual, feeling very thirsty, feeling very tired during the day, at night, you're constantly tired and you want to sleep. In this area of uh, Hyacinth Green, we see lots of uh, ethnic uh, minority groups. It's a very big area and the diabetes is actually very, very prominent and it's quite a large percentage of people in this area that have type 2 diabetes. Right, well welcome everyone to the Diabetes Juggle Programme. The Juggle Programme has been around for about four or five years now. It runs over a period of four weeks, uh, one day a week. So the first three weeks we're looking at what we need to do and week four we're looking at why we need to do it, why we, why we aiming to have good diabetes control. Uh, each session lasts for about two and a half hours and we have quite a lot of resources, as you can see, uh, behind me that we use in delivering various aspects of that. Anyone know what those complications of diabetes are? We tend to get most of our referrals coming through the GPs and practice nurses, so anyone who's been recently diagnosed or even have diabetes for quite a while can access via their GP because it gives them the confidence and empowers them, not just with regards to diet, but actually what those figures mean when they have blood tests, what to do if they're not happy, and actually two-way communication setting up with the GP so that they're more in charge of their treatment as well as their condition. We heard about Self-Help Nottingham from the City Council. To set up a self-help group is not quite easy. I think you need quite a dedicated team. Our story is quite funny because we initially started just a Facebook group. So we used to just meet on Facebook and chat and talk until the lady said we need to formalize this thing, make it better. So we have been meeting in each other's houses. It, it's been a journey for us. We've been going on for a year now. And I think we're still learning, we're still finding our feet. Uh, so it's not been easy, it's not been a very easy road, but I think the dedication and the of the team is what has helped us put, put us through. When we met Self-Help, when we initially went there and explained to them what we were wanting to do, Self-Help were quite excited to work with us. 
and they, they thought it was quite a good initiative for them to take on board. Paige and Velma have really, really been mentors for the whole committee. There are times we don't know what we are doing, how do you set up a constitution, how do we do our finances. Those are the things we've gone back to self-help and said, look, we don't know how to do these things, where do we go from here? So the advice I'd give to anyone thinking of setting up a self-help group is time. Because it's on a voluntary basis, nobody's paying for you. So you need a dedicated team. You need people who are actually going to be available. And I think patience. We've learned that working with the community, you need a lot, a lot of patience. We do need a lot of local self-help groups because most people are unable to go on social media, they're unable to go online, but if they have something feasible that is local, then it is beneficial for them. That's a really good thing about this programme about self-help. They're responsive to your needs. There's no pressure, there's no deadlines, there's no statistics. It's about you, your health and your community. I think the benefits definitely are worth with self-help groups. They do work, um, but a lot of it is about how much people put in in the first place. I think you'll only get back what you put in. If people come together and they put their head together, it's so easy to understand. So we can bring all our knowledge uh, together and decode the system. Today's event is very, very useful. It's um, a very important event. I think today's event was very good. I think and it's very calm and very relaxing. Very good. Educational, everything. I am here for um, six months. I'm coming from Burkina Faso. I am a former minister of uh, national education and literacy in my country. I was told by a friend, actually. But I said, let me give it a go and go and have a look. You know, it's so useful. I wish it can be done every time. You know, not only once, but twice, maybe thrice. Twice a month. Lot to talk about. Very good. The range of activities is brilliant. And informative. Interesting. If you are uh, healthy uh, in your mind and in your uh, in physical also uh, way, you can share the best thing in the world.